their life a reality TV show. Um, As you do. And they turned them down. They said no. They said, no, we got a business. Well, they didn't really understand. They didn't understand. Uh, and then Discovery came back about four months later and said, no, I don't think you understand. Like, we want to make your TV show. It's going to be big for your business. And they're like, okay. Uh, so they ran a pilot. Pilot did well. Uh, their first season, they were like the number one viewed TV show for a first season on Discovery Channel ever. It's called Diesel Brothers is the name of the TV show. And then the rest is, like I say, after the TV show, they like they filmed 24-7. Uh, so it's hard to run a business. So they had to put people in place to run the business as, as that's going on. They're still a part of it. They still, you know, do everything that they can, but they needed somebody to run marketing. So that's where I came in. I started running marketing for them, uh, running some face, some super, super successful Facebook campaigns. Hello and welcome to The Robust Marketer. Today I am lucky to have a good friend of mine, a new friend, Van Oaks here. So basically what's happening today, I'm just going to level with you. We had uh, someone cancel at the last minute and I really wanted to get a podcast out this week. So I wanted to start uh, a new series of interviews that I'm doing with people that just have really cool jobs, really cool stories, and are really cool people within the digital marketing industry. Uh, that's not to say he's not a heavy hitter. That's not to say he's, a bad, he's not a badass, because he is. Uh, but I just wanted, I wanted to have a conversation here. We could get a new podcast out, uh, tell a little story maybe about how we met, leave out some of the details. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, so welcome to the podcast, Van. How you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm freaking pumped to be here, man. <laughs> it's super cool. So why don't we – so first of all, I met Van uh, when we – I went to Tim Bird's Mastermind. So – uh, Tim and I were working on a project together, and so he invited me down to his mastermind. I came to check it out. It was just uh, a really amazing event, and, and the quality of people there were so cool. Uh, and he was telling me, and this is the same I would say about the mastermind that we had, is you get people from like all walks of life. You get, you get all, it's really amazing to see all the different sort of jobs that are like possible in the industry. And, uh, and, and Vegas was just an unbelievable fun time. I, br I broke Van's live hockey cherry. Uh, and I, so just yes. talked his ear off, explaining all the rules that he thought he knew about. It was hockey. fantastic. It was great. <laughs> and I have to say that the Vegas Knights put on a hell of a show. So uh, make sure you go see that. They're the still crushing it, man. They're like top still of the league now. It's, it's unreal. So when we do this podcast, we always start with uh, your marketer's journey. So tell us a little bit about uh, about how you started in marketing and, and what how it brought to what you're doing now and what you're doing now. You got it, man. Um so I don't, and I don't even know if we fully got into this in Vegas, but I started in door, I was in door to door sales, selling security systems for 12 years. I did that. I ran teams, I had multiple teams out selling door to door home security systems. Um, it was fantastic, super successful. Everything about it was great. The money was unreal. Um, it was amazing. The problem was, is that it was door to door and I would leave for like six months out of the year and go move to a town you know, in the South or wherever and sail there for six months. And then I would come home, uh, which is great when you're single, you can totally do that. But then what happens is you get married. Um, and I still did it when I was married. I would bring my wife with me. Um, it was the kids that broke me, uh, when I yes, finally had do. kids. Um, and I would, and she didn't want to bring two kids out for a summer and so forth. So I just told her I was going to try to do it on my own. She could stay home and I'll leave for six months. And I missed my second daughter walk. And I was just like, dude, this is not, this is not the life I want to live. Um, though the money's fantastic, there's other ways to make money. So I jumped. I c completely got out of door-to-door -door sales. Uh, and I started doing affiliate marketing from home. Uh, just because I could be that? home with my kids. What uh, my, my brother, my brother... So my brother-in-law had been doing affiliate marketing for a while. Um, and when I was selling ADT, he ran offers for me and we would get leads from him and so forth. So when I got out, when I told him that I was kind of done, he's like, dude, you should just do affiliate marketing. Like you can work with me. We'll just do it from home. Like you'll be home 24 seven with your kids. It's great. Um, so that's kind of what got me in it. And I did it with him for about a year. Um, and I wasn't very successful. Uh, what kind of um, stuff did you cut your teeth on? Like mobile, mobile pops, uh, things like that? No, it was it was all trials, man. Everything was 
like initially it was muscle um, and then it went to diet uh, and we were doing that stuff for a while. And then I was seeing how much these advertisers were making. Uh, and I was just like, this is, this is not cool. I would rather do what they're doing. Uh, so then I became an advertiser and I owned for two years. I owned muscle and skin and diet. All three. I ran those. They were, they were great. Um, I had no, I made obviously fantastic money doing it. Um, the issue that I had with it is that I depended on other people for traffic. So I wasn't running my own traffic at the time. And I was so, you're so, (laughs) it's so volatile. Like you can make money one week and then they're like, Oh, we're not running traffic or, Oh, guess what? Your mids is in risk or whatever. And it's just, so it was so up and down that I was just like, I got to figure something, something out. And I got an offer to come up and work for these diesel guys, um, <laughs> running their, their marketing for them. Uh, so I'd known them for a long time. They became a little bit, they were a little bit successful, but they weren't doing any sort of marketing, no retargeting, no email, <laughs> like nothing. They're just so a bunch who of, are these dudes. diesel guys? Tell, tell our audience who these diesel guys are. Okay. So I actually grew up the, the, it's not about what you know it's kind of who you know um and i grew up with these guys uh we grew up when we were like literally fourth grade grew up with all these guys um we all they all actually sold alarms with me for a long time so we all kind of worked together and then they started uh they had this idea to build a a diesel truck um diesels are a pretty niche audience but they're for any of you that don't know what a diesel truck is like the fans are diehard like you've never met more diehard niche fans as diesel truck fans. Uh, so they built a truck and they decided, Hey, let's build a truck up. Um, and let's make some diesel power wristbands. And anybody who buys a wristband, if the wristband's $5, anybody who buys one will, will enter them in to win this truck. Truck cost them like 40 grand to build the first time. Uh, they ended up profiting like, I think it was 180 grand off the first one. Wow. And then and that after, was through Facebook. Like, how did you get? How did you build that audience? Well, it, it went. It went. They went about it through YouTube. So at the time, it was YouTube. They had a couple viral videos that went out with Roland Cole with Diesel and all this stuff. Um, and then they started it there. And then after that year, they did another giveaway. They did another viral video that got featured on Jay Leno. Um, so they went on Jay Leno and then after that, it's kind of when they they brought me on just to run some marketing because they were getting big real quick. They went from selling wristbands to selling T-shirts and hats and stuff like that. And every five dollars you spent got you entered in to win one of these trucks. And they gave one away every two months. And it just got really big, really fast. And they're like, "Hey, we need some help uh, in this journey for them." At some point in time, Discovery Channel kind of contacted them about making their their life a reality TV show. Um, as you do. And they turned them down. They said no. They said no. We got a business. Well, they didn't really understand. They didn't understand. Uh, and then Discovery came back about four months later and said, "No, I don't think you understand. Like, we want to make your TV show. It's going to be big for your business." And they're like, "Okay." Uh, so they ran a pilot. Pilot did well. Uh, their first season, they were like the number one viewed TV show for a first season on Discovery Channel ever. It's called Diesel Brothers is the name of the TV show. And then the rest is, like I say, after the TV show, they like, they film 24 uh, seven. So it's hard to run a business. So they had to put people in place to run the business as, as that's going on. They're still a part of it. They still, you know, do everything that they can, but they needed somebody to run marketing. So that's where I came in. I started running marketing for them, uh, running some face, some super, super successful Facebook campaigns. Um, retargeting, email, just, just basic stuff that all of you guys, I know you already know, uh, um, but they just weren't doing it. And I just kind of stepped into a position where it was fantastic. That's super interesting to have. I got to say, first of all, I got to clarify this. I know you don't love when, when people talk about this, but you, you're on television once every couple episodes. Uh, and, uh, so the good, so my, my, here's my line, Eric, and we talked about this before. Um, <laughs> When I start making six figures like these guys are making, I'll say I'm on TV. Until yeah. right now, it's like a check here, or there, and lunches during the day. So, so like the TV part, and honestly, I'm honest when I say that, it's so in the backside for me. Like I don't even focus on it whatsoever because it's yeah. not important to me. Like all, I, I'm so pumped to work for this company and make it grow because it's 
it's here and it's available. Um, I don't really have the desire. And I think I tried to tell you that I don't have a huge desire to be on TV. I just want to build a business. So that's, that's really cool. I just, I just think you'd be so good on TV. I think it's only a matter of time before you're discovered. I've seen your, I've right? seen your Insta. I've seen your, your mumble rap. I've seen all this stuff. Like, I think it's, it's only a matter of time until you're discovered. So whether you like it or not, you might. And I think after this podcast, it just might just, just right, just take off and we'll use that suey. Suey? Yeah. <laughs> suey. yeah. Yeah. That could be your cat, your cash race. But anyway, the fact is you're building a really cool business here. You've got a really viable brand that people are super excited about. Uh, and, and so is that, that's what your business is right now is basically running merch for the, 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 the yeah. diesel movement. Well, I actually do both. I, I, I run product development. So all the biz dev, the product development, I, I oversee, and then I run the marketing. So as, as we progressed to, you know, a $20 million store, um, we don't just sell t-shirts anymore. We used to just sell t-shirts and hats. Um, so I'm in charge of business development to where and product development to where now we have our own line of pants and we're making boots and we make parts for your trucks and we make survival stuff, knives, um, whatever, you know, whatever these people are going to buy anyways. My biggest thing, like if you're going to buy this stuff, I promise you I'm going to figure out a way to make it. And you'll buy it from me because if you buy it from me, you get a chance to win a truck. Um, so you yeah, so, so yeah, we do the product development and then I run the marketing as far as the campaigns and everything. Do you have diesel baby onesies? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. I was going to say, and why not if you don't? Yeah. Yes. No, we do. We actually have onesies and then we have rompers, which are different by the way. I um, got a romper from that, that Quinn dude, that Quinn Hobbs fellow. I tried it on and I was blown away by how both comfortable and flattering it was. Yes. Very nice. So we sell both of those. Yeah. So there's really not a whole lot like that we don't sell uh, on the site as far as like apparel and it's branded like we've built a massive brand um, from like before the TV show and then after the TV show it blew up to where now we have we have a tire line we have you know truck parts we have everything. um, And we just kind of you know throw it into this machine and it spits out money. That's amazing. And, and like how system, like how, how big is the operation aside from the show? Like how big is your team basically? So I run, so there's two sides. We have the mechanic side that actually builds these trucks and are filmed 24 seven. And then you've got the administrative side, which is me and the other owners that they're gone most of the time. So I run kind of it and I've got probably a 15 man team, uh, doing different things, designers and, and everything that way guys running social media uh but when you include our shipping department of sending you know because we we run our own fulfillment uh we've probably got 50 60 employees something like that and then what where are you you're sourcing the products from china mostly uh depends we make all the so i make my uh i make t-shirts overseas and we order a massive amount and then we have them shipped in and then we print on them here um, but most of the stuff we try to, as weird as it is, we try to stay as, um, uh, made in the USA as possible because of our demographic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not very, it's not great for the end line. Um, it's not great for revenue, but at the end of the, cause you can get stuff made a lot cheaper overseas, but our demographic, we've kind of really got narrowed in and they want American made stuff. Um, even all you Canadian dudes. Uh, that we ship stuff to, they want American made stuff. So, so we make a lot of our, any, if it's possible to make it in the USA, we make it here. Uh, if not, we, we, we ship it from overseas. And you could balance, like you're in a really interesting position where, and I've talked to a lot of people about e-commerce now where so many e-commerce businesses are a hundred percent reliant on ads in order to drive it. If you stop ads, that store will dry up. And you're in a really yeah. neat position where you you know you can afford to to take some luxuries like like the U.S. you know sourcing from the U.S. only and stuff like right. that because right. you've got this this incredible brand machine that just keeps rolling. Like if you did stop running ads, you'd still keep selling products. Yeah, and I and I, what it comes down to is the influencer marketing uh, because these guys because of the TV show um, they've got millions of followers. So and even the guys that aren't on TV show just because they're diesel fanatics and so forth they've got. 50,000 followers or so forth. So when, when the ads aren't running and, and there are times that we don't have ads, a ton of ads running, um, it still goes. 
because these guys are still posting. They they have equity in the company and they're still posting about it. And the and the RO, ROI on that's way better than Facebook, anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so it's 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 like cheating. I have influencers here that I can say post something and they'll post it. Um, we have the Facebook. We have we have everything going on there. We have a massive email list. Um, it's it, it's almost cheating. <laughs> it's, but, it's but no, it's there's there's a lot of work that like like aside from that, there is a lot of work that's went into this giveaway model. The way they run things by giving away, we give away a hundred thousand dollar truck every month. You yeah. know, uh, there's a lot of legal behind it. There's a lot of and now there is a lot of Facebook going on. There is a lot of uh, stuff that we've changed within the last year that's you know three hundred times our business. Do you feel is the is the Facebook is are your efforts feeding into the show as well in any measurable way? Yeah, so so I they actually um, I I actually started so it does help, but I even tested ads for uh, viewership of the TV show to increase ratings. Uh, I did it for the guys uh, because they had like an episode that was mediocre one time, and they're like, "What do we do?" And I said, "Dude, I guarantee you." I can run ads and I can target specific people and I can make them watch your show on a specific day. And they said, try it, you know, there's your budget. And I went at it pretty hard and, and, and it did, it impacted big time. So we ran Facebook ads for commercials um, and for the TV show and the TV, sh that episode crushed it. So it does impact the Facebook. Everything does impact that. Now you, that was an ad that literally had a trailer for the show or something. You targeted your core demographic and then said, tune in on this channel at this time. It wasn't yes, like a video the, ad where the content was there. Yeah, it, it was tune in at this time. Uh, and it was just, a, it was just a little trailer that I did. It was a video ad. It wasn't canvas. It wasn't anything special. It was a video ad. I targeted, uh, heavily, um, a lot of Texas. <laughs> a, lot a lot of, of Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Texas. Uh, so, just did some detailed targeting and found the right type of people and it, and it crushed. Yeah, the viewership was through the roof. It went really well. What's the weirdest product that you've tried that worked? What's, do you have <laughs> any, any ones that are really surprising that you pulled off? You're like, holy uh, shit, like toilet paper? Like any, anything like yeah, that? Yeah, like how? Uh, it would be weird to you, um, but it's not weird to us. And when you look at me in the face, it's not weird, but our beard care. So okay. we sell on an outrageous amount of beard balm and mustache wax and and beard oil, uh, that was the one that kind of surprised me the most. I, I knew the I knew flashlights and knives and tactical type stuff would do well, but the I didn't realize the demand of bros that are rocking beards. Yeah, or awesome mustaches, or mustaches because they can't grow a beard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not mentioning any names. I, I've, I've, I've never really oiled my beard, but I think I might. I think I might start getting into your it. Your wife, your wife will love it if you do. It will make okay. it teddy bear soft. Oh, lovely. Well, that's that's my that, that's that's it's my name on Tinder. So that uh, that sounds <laughs> excellent. Very cool. So beard products work. Uh, ha having a badass, ever growing brand also works. I, I one thing that was interesting, like this show really took off. It, it sort of like fills that Duck Dynasty niche a little bit. Like when those guys left a little bit, like there's there's a lot, there, that's, that's a same strong demographic. niche. What's yeah, that? It's, the same, it's the same demographic. Um, and I, I think people, and, and I speak to all marketers when I say this, like don't um, write off hillbilly white, you know, they 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 are diehard fans. If they, if they become loyal to you, they will be loyal to you forever. They're a different type of people to market to. So if you cater to them and if you show them love, they're they're diehard. They'll spend every dime they have uh, because they support your brand. So we've we've really kind of you know dialed that in, and we've really kind of catered to them. Um, and they love the guys. They love, you know, they love the whole social media thing. They love following it, seeing all the trust, seeing all that, everything that way. Um, but I see so many marketers like excluding people who are low income for whatever reason. Or, or but these guys will spend, you know, every last dime they have on a T-shirt for us. So. And this, it makes sense, like the, building the brand with the giveaways, I think seems like such a core part of it yeah. in terms of like attracting that audience and like offering them value. Like that's a significant, yeah. 
that's a significant value. That's something that they're invested in that they can then win. And I'm sure you make a ton of videos about re people receiving these trucks. That's sort of yeah. like amazing moment yeah. when that happens. So the testimonials crush it. When we do retargeting with testimonials, they, they really crush. Um, but that's the biggest part of the giveaway stuff is, is it's always fun to give them away and it's always super fun to see these people win these trucks. But you need to, yeah, you have to document all that stuff and you got to get it out there because there are a lot of people that are doing giveaways that don't give, give stuff away. Uh, and people need to see those people winning constantly. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same for courses. It's the same. You've got to like build in those success stories of like, of hey, I took this course and I crushed native or I uh, did this yeah, yeah. did this Facebook thing and it crushed it. So you need you need to have that feedback loop for sure. I remember very yeah, early, but, early on in my career when we were running like these vote for prizes ads like way, way back in the days, like 2007 or 2008. And we and we eventually called one of these people who entered the, a lead form to tell them that they had won a thousand dollars or something. And they like they hung up on us. We couldn't get them to like answer the phone and tell them no. we're trying to send you a thousand dollars. They just like I promise it, this isn't a telemarketer. Yeah, it was a weird. That was a weird experience. You want to um, know what? You know, like from from. So we met at the mastermind, uh, and I'm going to speak a little bit towards the mastermind. Yeah, uh, Tim's fantastic. That. You guys, you guys were all fantastic. Um, but and Tim might not love this or might not, but his stuff that he taught. I knew some of it, uh, some of it I kind of remembered, some of it I wrote down, some of it I implemented immediately, some of it I didn't, uh, but hands down, the most valuable part of that whole thing, and it's not cheap to go, uh, is the networking. Like, yeah. dude, some of the people that I met from there that I talk to on a daily basis, you included, like I talk to on a daily basis now that will hit me up in the morning and say, hey, bro, have you tried a canvas ad today? No, you should. And I'll, and I'll try it and it'll just crush, you know? So, uh, I think that's what kind of blew me the way, blew me away the most about it all was the contacts that I made. Yeah. Uh, it's been more valuable than anything. Like since I've been back, since we got back from there, I think we went from, it was roughly a six ROA. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right around six return on ad spend. Uh, and, and now we're close to like 12. Um, so there was a lot of things that were implemented and then a lot of things that I learned after because of the context that I met there. Um, so I, I'll, be, I'll be the biggest preacher of that mastermind and not just for the actual teachings and the trainings, but for the networking events and for the people that you, that you get in contact with. It kind of makes those. It's, it it kind of makes them no brainers, and that's the thing I realized going to Tim's is that people are going to get so much value just from from being put together in a room with all those other people. Like there was that one Belgian dude that had like sixty yeah. companies, and he was like a hundred million. Like, and he had just come yeah. to check it out, and ch you know, and then you got you who's got this really interesting angle. You got the Sangara yeah. brothers who I want to do a podcast with. Yeah. You got those, the New York dudes and everyone like, and seriously for me, like it's the same thing. I'm hitting up these people. I talk to these people, but they're part of my network now on a daily basis. Uh, not to mention with, with Tim and, and, and you know what, we're, what we're building. Uh, and that's crazy. I think every person I've talked to who's ever attended one of these things sort of is able to, to take away from it uh, something that can double their business. And then even if it wasn't from the teachings, they still associate it to, to that's, that that's group. That's what I'm saying. You know? it's, it's the contact that you maintain. Like, cause I, a lot of his stuff worked immediately. And then a lot of the stuff came from these people that I met that are like, Hey dude, what are you doing today? You should try this out. Did you shotgun today? Yeah, I did. Uh, did you do this? And, and, and it's been fantastic. It's been hands down the most valuable thing that I've done. And I think I talk about this a lot in the podcast too, but it's like, this is the, 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 the other massive benefit of being in this industry is are the people like you just, you, you're building these lifelong friends Now, almost any city you go to in the world uh, you're, you know, a you'll be there with a bunch of other people who traveled there, maybe. But you also just get g friends globally and people globally that like that you want to hang out with. That not only you want to hang out with, but can also impact your business dramatically. It's just a, a huge, right. huge opportunity. Right. Hands down. So uh, cool. I'm so excited that I went to it for one, and then for the people that I met. Like I'll, I'll preach it to anybody to go uh, do a training, do a nice, I do a mastermind, do whatever 
whatever you need to do to get in those networking events because they're more valuable than anything else. Especially if you're already banking. Like it, it makes it the big difference. If you're a newbie, there's other ways to learn and get into it. But if you have yeah. a business that's killing or doing well, you will take something away from that that will accelerate it greatly from the teacher or from the other people or whatever. Like it's, it's just bound to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I had one of the dudes from California that runs a, a clothing line. He's just setting up his car giveaway. He's going to do a car giveaway. He's going to try it out, our whole model. I kind of explained how it went. I got him in touch with our law firm. I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately – he's got a completely demographic, so I don't like – It no way detract from you at all. Just, yeah, at all. So, so I've been helping him through the steps, process of that, and I just can't wait to see his numbers. I, I, think, he, I think he'll crush it. Very cool. So – what have you, do you guys have a Facebook group as well? So we, so we didn't have a Facebook group. We had Facebook pages and we have tons of pages, but we didn't have a group until uh, Tim's like, you need to set up a group. Uh, the problem with that is that in order to run that group, you need to have somebody 24 seven that can respond. They're not available. I'm not that available uh, with my time. So we're looking to hire somebody right now specifically with a massive amount of diesel knowledge. Um, and we got the Facebook group set up. We just haven't really started it yet because we need to hire the right person for that. Because that's going to 10x everything too. Like that that right yeah. there, you get the right person yeah. in there who can manage a community. You can get your, your guys to chip in occasionally and make guest spots, do oh, yeah. something like – it oh, just yeah. gives you so much more access to people's feeds when you come through groups. That's one thing that, that I'm really realizing. We're obviously going to be building a group this year as well. Uh, yeah. And it, especially, you know, with these news feed changes looming or whatever, um, just having that extra touch point where people who are super engaged with your topic can, can jump in. It's right. A, right. Another no brainer. And, I, and we, we actually possibly discussed that this morning with the owners. Uh, they were just like, okay, then the next obvious step is just get somebody in here. We've interviewed twice. Um, we'll hire somebody quick, but yeah, that's like goal number one is to get that group up and running. Um, since I came back. Very cool. So that's something big on the agenda. You're going to be kind of consistently testing new products, uh, evolving your skills. Do you guys do anything with messenger or with, uh, with like, yeah, Facebook messenger? So we don't, um, we, I, I haven't ever touched into that a whole lot. I know last year it was pitched really, really hard. Um, and we never got into it then. We really haven't a whole lot yet, but it's not to say that we won't. It's just right now, the majority of our efforts are going towards the, the Facebook and the, the email and the social media marketing because we do a lot of Instagram. Um, yeah. That's where the majority of these guys' followers migrated from YouTube over to Facebook over to Instagram. Uh, so we do a lot of marketing through Instagram too. So Very cool. That's, We'll, we'll, we'll tool up. Uh, we just started another giveaway. Uh, and like our numbers are kind of crazy. If you're going to do this business model, when you're not running a giveaway, your demographics, so they're so diehard. They know everything that you do. And they know that if you're not running a giveaway, they're going to wait until you do to buy your product. So in those two weeks that we're not running a giveaway, stuff kind of died. So January was, was hurtful. Um, but the beginning of, uh, this month is crushing it. Very, very cool. So you're in Utah, right? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I got to come for a visit. It's a lot cooler to... than people think, bro. Like, it's yeah. way cooler. Like, people don't understand Utah is an extremely beautiful outdoorsy place. You can get desert, you can get mountains, you can get whatever you want. Utah's way underrated. I, okay, you heard it here first. Now, I also wanted to get on camera. We're almost we're almost done here. We'll wrap it up. I know you got to go, and I, I do as well. But I want to get on camera your – uh, your mustache. I want to talk about your amazing mustache <laughs> that everyone loves. And I asked you, yeah, there you go. Get a good, get up right up there, personal. Uh, tell us why. Tell us why the mustache. So, like, and I think I told you this at you some did. point in our Vegas. I don't remember a lot about the Vegas uh, <laughs> trip, but I think I told you at some point that, like, because a lot of people ask me, and you ask me, dude, why don't you shave that thing? Uh, and I said, dude, just spend a day with me. Spend a day, and we did. We went out to the hockey game. We went out at night. We did everything. And I said, I like, I can never shave this thing, and you witnessed it firsthand, just for the the positive vibes. Like, I can't go anywhere without somebody stopping me, like random people. Like, I've never met them before and saying, hey, that's a fantastic mustache. Like, there's never – I don't know if you – nobody will ever come up to you and tell you that's, a, that's an awful mustache. <laughs> 
No, <laughs> that's they're, true. They're, they're, they're like, they're just not going to tell you that they think it's creepy, but everybody else is going to come up and tell you that's a fantastic mustache. So everywhere I go, you witness it. Everybody wants to party. Does everybody wants to have a good time with a, with a guy with a mustache because they know he's a good time. So I did shave it for almost a year. I had it for a year. I shaved it for a year. And the amount of disappointment that I got from people and the no love, like if you're out, when I'm out in public, nobody recognizes me. Nobody cares. I'm another guy. But now when I'm out in public, I'm just another guy that has a dope ass mustache. Um, and they're going to let you know. So It's just branding that's, 101. That's the yeah, these guys all rock beards and stuff. If I could grow a massive beard, maybe I'd get into that. But I think at this point, I'm a converted mustache grower. Um, and I'll just stick stick with my strength, you know? I like it. And and the wife's okay with it at this point. She's she's fully accepted. Uh, you got you to gotta practice like a solid year of celibacy. But <laughs> after that... <laughs> Well, you got three you're, kids. I'm sure you've had some. So there's yeah. been some tri spells no, in there. Long as you're in cool with uh, with about a year of her hating your guts. Um, after now, she's used to it. Now, like she'll like she'll tell me now. It's just kind of you. Like I'm used to it now. So no, initially no, she absolutely hated it. Um, but now now it's kind of just me. I love it. And the the other cool the other and, fact and I don't got chicks hitting on me. I don't got when I go out, no chicks are gonna hit on a dude with a mustache. So she she feels secure. Yeah, that would never happen. So uh my other favorite fact about you is that you work with the Diesel brothers, but you drive a Tesla. Uh, and I don't know if you want that going on on the podcast. You might have to edit uh, that out, but it's like you have to park around back at work, I hear. Yeah, so so let me explain, though. There's a little bit behind that. I had a diesel truck. Um, I had a lot of fast cars in my days. Like, But what happened is when they asked me to come up, work up here, I had built my home and I had made my family like an hour away from here. So when they're like, come work up here, driving my diesel truck up there with twin turbos on it, like I was getting maybe five miles to the gallon, like spending eight to nine hundred dollars of gas each, you know, each yeah. freaking month. So that's not doable. So I got a car and I was still spending $600 in gas a month. And then I just decided, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet because they're fun anyways. And get a get one of the new Teslas that are one of the performance models because they're fast. Um, and I don't got to pay for gas. So that, that was the purpose of it. Uh, I didn't realize how, how much I'd fall in love with the car and like the autopilot and everything that way. And the fact that the fastest car out there um but yeah i work at a diesel shop the front of my shop where my parking spot says diesel power so for a little while i park around back um so that all these diehard diesel fans will when they show up i got I, literally two weeks ago i got heckled as i left the office <laughs> i had these dudes these dudes are out front your, your typical you know wranglers dip in their mouth driving their diesel truck and i pulled out and they're like the dude literally is like what in the hell is that and i was like i didn't say anything he's like diesel power <laughs> like like that was like you say white power yeah uh, exactly no it was it was diesel power and i was like wow. oh i got you because you're at the diesel i got it i got it so i just got in my car and left amazing <laughs> Van, I want yeah. to thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. If people want to find you, because you should just follow I, I, Van's Instagram is just a laugh riot. Really enjoy it. You want to go to at it's your boy Van. It's uh, your boy Van. Yeah, it's your so, boy Van. So that came from. Don't ask how that. It's good vibes. Ended up being it's your boy Van. Um, check it out. I got some sweet mommy blogger posts. I got modeling pics. Um, Basically everything that you hate, everything that you hate to see on Instagram, I'll recreate it. I promise. I love it. And you were and you were modeling yesterday. I saw you doing some modeling yesterday yeah. too, talking about yeah. how hard it was and modeling and I don't understand. Like model life, everybody thinks it's like glamorous. It's not glamorous. There's nothing glamorous about mod life. Like it's cold outside and you're standing there trying to take it's it's not glamorous. So like <laughs> everybody that says model life's easy, like Maybe try it. Yeah. And then tell me it's easy. But until you try it, like, whatever. Oh, you got it all down. I think that's a really good yeah. note to end the podcast on. Thanks again, Van. I'm going to see you in San Diego. Yeah. You're coming to Traffic and Conversion. Yeah. 
Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to traffic and conversions, and then I'm actually gonna stay for social media marketing world because we have such a heavy social media following. I'll be there a full week if All I right. survive. Well, we'll connect then. I look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was good to see you, bud. You too, brother. Bye bye. All right. Later.